Welcome to a special video. This one's going to be on your research essay. Since we've reached the halfway point, it's time to start thinking about this to make sure that we get it done and do a good job before the end of the semester. Now, just a real quick reminder, uh, you have to do a four to six page research essay. I don't have any specific topic for you to do. This is going to be a topic of your choice, a uh, choose your own adventure, if you will. Basically, what you need to do is find a topic, something that you're interested in that we either have talked about in the class so far, or we're going to talk about in the class that interests you. So if you're in the world history course, if you're really interested in ancient Rome, or if you're interested in Julius Caesar, or maybe you're interested in, I don't know, European exploration, this is your chance to do a little more, bit more research on that. Likewise, if you're in the U.S. history class and you're really interested in Robert E. Lee, Ulysses S. Grant, maybe you're interested in George Washington or the Proclamation of 1763, same thing. This is your chance to find something that you're interested in and learn more about it. <clears throat> Now, it is important to make sure that your four to six pages in length does not include a title page or your bibliography. I need four to six pages of stuff, four to six pages of meat, if you will. And then your title page and your bibliography are like the bread that holds the, the sandwich together. Now, this is the research essay Dropbox and instructions page. And whether you're in the world history or the US history class, uh, your instructions are exactly the same. So it will look the same no matter what. I have here a little video. This is completely optional, but if you're somebody who needs a little extra help writing a paper, maybe you're not good at doing papers, or maybe this is your first collegiate paper, this video may help you. <clears throat> and then down at the bottom of this, I have just some reminders. Essay should be four to six pages in length. It should follow standard Chicago style formatting. Uh, sources for the paper must be scholarly, such as books by historians, peer reviewed journals or scholarly websites. No more than half of the references can be from the internet. Now that just means web pages. Only half of your references can be from web pages. You have to use some sort of academic journal or academic research. And do not use Wikipedia as a reference. I know Wikipedia has a lot of good information, but you have to be very, very careful with Wikipedia. I also have in here, you should use a minimum of three to five sources. Five is not your maximum. If you want to use more than five, you can, but minimum of three. If you are doing a research paper on George Washington, don't just use one source on George Washington because that one source could be wrong. Believe it or not, there are some controversies and there are some disagreements regarding George Washington. Likewise, Julius Caesar. Don't just use one thing on Julius Caesar. Because Julius Caesar has some controversial issues as well. At the bottom of the page is your research essay drop box. I do want to let you know that this will check your work for plagiarism. So make sure that you don't plagiarize. Remember, plagiarizing is the same as academic theft or it, um, intellectual theft, if you will. So make sure that your research essay is sourced use citation, and I'll go over that information in just a moment. I also want to let you know that if you have a similarity match in your research essay when you turn it in, that's less than probably 5%, that's a good sign that you did not cite or notate enough, which is just as bad sometimes as having too much of a similarity match. A good similarity match 10 to 25 percent. That means that you have documented your source. On the syllabus is the rubric. 
know, it says research essay, you must complete an original four to six page research essay, blah, blah, blah. And the rubric, this is more or less how you're gonna be grading. So if you want to get a high B or an A, make sure you have a well-developed thesis that explains the background of the topic. Make sure you develop that thesis with substantial and relevant historical information. Provide effective analysis. And what analysis means is explain details of your topic. And if you are going to use a citation, a quote, a source, you have to make sure you explain why that source material is important and how it plays into your paper. Minor errors that do not detract from the quality of the essay. Make sure that you're writing in standard English. I know this is not an English class, but write as if it was. I may not grade specifically for grammar, but if you're not making full sentences, if there are obvious issues, you will get some points taken off for those. And the last thing, and this might actually be the most important thing, is make sure your paper is well organized and well written. You would be amazed at how much easier writing a paper is, no matter the subject, if you do an outline. I'm going to be honest with you, it took me until I was in graduate school to understand how important outlines are. So now I tell all of my students, get in the habit of making an outline when you write a paper, because your paper will be a thousand times better and you will instantly score better than if you did. So once again, make sure you have a thesis. This paper is about Julius Caesar, and in this paper, I'm going to show X, Y, Z. Make sure that all of your information you find supports that thesis. If you're going to argue that Julius Caesar was the best general because of the tactics he used in battle, don't say that somebody else's tactics were better. If you get what I'm trying to say there. So make sure that you're always driving in the same direction. Make sure that you're always pointed in the same direction that your thesis shows. Easiest way to fail this, number one, don't do it. Number two, plagiarize. And number three, not citing your sources. So make sure that you cite your sources. Make sure that your work is your own. Make sure that you do not plagiarize. And honestly, I hope that this is a fairly easy paper because it's a topic you're interested in. I don't wanna make you write about something during the summer that you're not interested in because I know how short the semester is. Now, what about Chicago style citations? There's probably many of you who don't know what it is or have only used it maybe once or twice. But this is the Chicago style citation information folder that's in Blackboard. And citation style is, or Chicago style citations, that is the form of citation that's used for history, anthropology, sociology, things like that. It's different than MLA that you find for English classes. It's different than MP or APA that you find for psychology classes. Uh, historians, we kind of do our own thing in it. Quite honestly, it's something that you have seen before and just maybe didn't know that's what it was called. So I do have here at the top a Chicago style quick guide. And this is a file that you can download. Close over. And this gives you just the basic rundown of what you need to do for a Chicago style citation. Now in Chicago style citations, you have two things. You have a footnote and you have a bibliography. The footnote is going to be a little note that goes at the bottom of your page. The bibliography is going to be what goes at the end of your paper. And I'll show you how to do a footnote here in just a moment using both Word and Google Docs so that way you know how to do it. What the footnote is going to do is it has all the information. It's like the roadmap of how you're, how to find the information you're using. And it always has the first name of the author, then the last name of the author, 
a comma, the name of the book, put that into italics, and then this is the publication information. So this book right here called Splitting the Difference, it was published in the city of Chicago by the University of Chicago Press, and it was published in 1999. This is the page number. So if we were writing a pretend paper and we had quoted this author, the quote we use could be found on page 65. As long as you follow that format for your notes, for your footnote, you'll be fine. Bibliography, the only real difference is you switch the first name and the last name and you leave off the page number. Once again, if you follow this format, you'll be perfectly fine. This has for one author, two authors, more than four authors, editors, chapter of a book, journals, magazines, newspaper articles. There's nothing that you will need to cite that you can't do from this quick guide that I have put together. So everything that you need to know is available here in this quick guide. So if you're writing your paper, just download this, print it out, keep it with you, and then you can refer to it and say, oh, that's what the bibliography should look like. That's what the footnote should look like. This crap test, how to evaluate sources, another file that you can open. And it says, what is the crap test? When you begin researching for essays and other assignments, you may find a lot of results related to your topic, but is it a good resource? And this wants you to look at the different parts of your source so that you can choose the best possible sources you have. Currency. Currency is more important in some fields than others. If you're doing a paper in physics and you need sources for your, your research paper on nuclear physics, you don't want something from 1940. You want to make sure that your information is up to date, usually the last 10 years or so. In history, though, uh, currency can be a little bit fuzzy because you have primary sources written from the date of the event, and then you have secondary sources where people have written about the, whatever the event is. So the, the important thing is make sure that your source is as up to date as possible. Make sure that the information is current. For relevance, you want to make sure that the information is important for what you need. Uh, if you're doing a paper on the Portuguese sailing along the coast of Africa, you want to make sure that every piece of information you're looking at is about that, and not about, say, Christopher Columbus coming to America. Make sure that all of your research is relevant to your topic. Authority. You want to make sure that whoever wrote the article, the book, or the newspaper article, the journal, whatever it might be that you're using is an authority. I can write a paper on nuclear physics, but I am definitely not a nuclear physicist, and I haven't taken a science course in a long time, and the last science course I took was actually geology. And geology and physics don't go together that closely. So make sure that whoever is writing your article has some sort of authority. That's actually one of the reasons that Wikipedia is dangerous. There are some authorities, there are some professionals that write on Wikipedia, but then again, there are a lot of people that just edit Wikipedia because they can. Accuracy, you want to make sure that the information is supported by evidence. You want to make sure that the information you're using is truthful and correct. And that is why using peer-reviewed articles is so important. When an article is pure peer-reviewed, that means others in the field have looked at it and they say, yes, this is good information. And then last but not least is purpose. You want to make sure that the information you're using isn't being 
written to influence you. You want it to just inform. You don't want opinion. You don't want propaganda. You want something that looks factual, objective, and impartial. The Purdue OWL is a very, very good website if you're doing reading. If you click on the Purdue OWL, it's going to bring you to this page right here, which is the Purdue Online Writing Lab. I think I showed this to you in the, in the introduction video, but I just want to show it to you again. The Purdue OWL has a lot of the same information as my, my quick guide does. It's just a little bit more in depth. If you're curious about the Chicago Manual of Style and what it is, it has information on its overview and how to put together a Chicago Manual paper. Then there's more formatting and style guides here. And it takes you through everything, books, periodicals, web sources, sample papers. Now you notice here there are two different types, author date and NB. History, we always use NB. This is notes and bibliography. So notes and bibliography for any history class you take, whether it's my class, a different West Georgia Tech class, or if you go on to a four-year degree, history classes always use notes and bibliography. Do you take a look at the Purdue Online Writing Lab if you have any problems with writing your paper. This will help you out almost as much as my quick guide will. Uh, this is just a lot more in depth. Now, what does a Chicago style footnote look like in the wild? This is a paper that I had to write long, long time ago. And a footnote is going to tell you where some information was found. And it's this little number one right here, if you can see where I'm highlighting. That's a footnote. And even if you don't know what this paper is about, this is going to give you an idea of where I'm getting my information from. So prior to 1910, it was an independent kingdom dating back to 668. And then there's a footnote. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll see here, my footnote refers to this. It's a website called Korea's History Background, AsianInfo.org, HTTP, www.AsianInfo.org, and all that other stuff. So what this is telling you is if you go to that website, this information that I've provided up here at the top will be there. Same thing here. Um, my next paragraph right here. In 1910, the Kingdom of Korea was annexed as a colony of Japan, blah, blah, blah. This division became permanent when the Republic of Korea was declared south of the 38th parallel on August 15, 1948. And the Democratic People's Republic of Korea was declared north of the 38th parallel on September 9, 1948. Here I've got a second footnote that corresponds to this down here. If you found this book by Robert K. Simmons, The Strained Alliance, Peking, Pyongyang, Moscow, and the Politics of the Korean Civil War, on page 104, you would find this information. So that's why the citations are so important. It helps find and support and show evidence of your paper. Now, how do I do that? If you're using, if you're using Google Docs, and let's say that this sent, or this paragraph right here needs to be cited, here's what you do. You type your information in, or you copy and paste it in. Then after, after the punctuation, you go up to insert, you click on footnote, and it will automatically put in a number. 
whatever the next footnote number is, it will put in by itself. In this case, it would be footnote number three. So you'll see the number three has now appeared. And down at the bottom is also a number three. I don't have to do anything ex except type in information. And let's just say that I wrote the book, comma, italics, unitalicized, place of publication, who published it, when it was published, and then finally, what page was it on? My book's really, really long, so it was on page 572. That's how you do a citation in Google Docs. Let me just undo all that. Now, what about in Word? It's that same section. What do I do in Word? Type it in or copy and paste it in. After the punctuation, I go to References, Insert Footnote. It's automatically put the number one in because this is the first footnote. And automatically at the bottom, it's put a number one. I don't have to do anything else, it formats it itself. And then just like before, I type in my information, tell size, where it was published, the year, and the page number. That's all you have to do. It takes care of itself almost. Now, where do you want to get your sources from? Number one best place to go to get your sources is the library. And our librarians here at West Georgia Technical College are amazing. They don't have people see them very often, and they really like helping you do research. This is the library website if you've never seen it before. I'm just gonna show you a couple of important things on here because I don't wanna make this video all about it. Uh, first of all, locations and staff. Each one of our campuses has a library. So whichever campus you're closest to, you can go to that library and talk to the librarians. The Carroll Campus Library, the librarian is Kathy Boss. The Coweta Campus Library is Dr. Ina Jokey. The Douglas Campus Library is Sarah Page and Farley Jenkins. The LaGrange Library, Carla Fred and the McQuiston. The Murphy Library is Matt Sunrich. Any of these people will help you. You can call them, you can email them, you can come visit them, and they will help you out. It is also important to know that you can use any of those libraries. If for some reason you live in LaGrange and you get bored and you wanna to drive to Douglasville, you're welcome to use the Douglasville Library. Or maybe you take most of your classes in Carrollton and maybe you have one class in Newton, you can use both the Carrollton and the Newton Library, you can do that. Another really cool thing is if there's something, if there's a book in Carrollton, and you live in LaGrange and you don't want to do the 45 minute drive, just let your librarian know and then we can send it to you through the campus mail. Resources right here. The most important resource is this first one, this West Georgia Technical College catalog search. You click on WGTC catalog, it brings you to our collection. A book that I know we have because I have 
donated it myself is the book Mouse. And you see here, Mouse, A Survivor's Tale. You can see it is available at the Carroll campus. Mouse 1, available at the Coweta campus. Mouse 2, available at the Coweta campus. We have a copy available in Carrollton, a copy available in Coweta, a copy available in Douglasville, and a copy available in Murphy as well. So this is a very good place to get books. Let's say also you're doing something on Julius Caesar. You can search just the West Georgia Tech Library. And you find some items here. Or you can search everything, which will search both the West Georgia Tech Libraries and the libraries of other technical colleges throughout the state. And what does that mean? We can get you books not just from West Georgia Tech. We can get you books from any school in the technical college system. We can even get you books from UWG, UGA, or anywhere in the state as well. That just takes things a little bit longer. Another very, very important thing and might be where you should do the bulk of your research is Galileo. Galileo, if you click on it, it brings you to this page. Galileo is a Google search for academics. This search bar here at the, at the beginning, it's good, but it's going to show you everything out there. If you are going to search for George Washington, I'm just going to type in and hit search. I want you to see how many things come up. There are so many things that's having to think. And we have 3,854,591. That is a lot. You don't have time to go through 3 million things. So it does give you this research starter. It gives you an idea of what George Washington is about. You might see that there are PDFs. You can download the books, you can read the full books, um, and you'll see limit by type. There's all these different things right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click where it says advanced search. A couple of tricks you can do. Choose a discipline to search. We are in history, so let's click history. You also want full text because whatever you read, you want it to be the whole thing. And you want scholarly peer review. That way you know that it is authoritative. And now let's hit search. We were at 3.8 million. See if we can get that down a little bit. We got that down to 218,000. Still a lot, but that's a lot better than 3.8 million. Now let's say George Washington and Revolutionary War. What does that do? We we're at 218,000. Now we're down to 67,000. So you can really narrow down by using these keywords right here. George Washington, Revolutionary War, Valley Forge, we're down to 14,000. It's still a lot, but that's a lot better than the 3.8 million that we started with. So use Galileo. Galileo for academic research, it's better than Google, especially since we have free access to it. Galileo will get you the information you need it will provide you with scholarly peer reviewed items, which is what you're looking for. And it's really easy to get three to five to 
theme of these sources very quickly. Last but not least, your paper is due on the 26th. That gives you a little bit more than three weeks from the time of this video to do it. I want to highly encourage you to not wait until the last minute. The best way to handle a research paper, especially if you're not used to doing them, is a little bit at a time. This week, look up some sources. Next week, start analyzing those sources. And then the week after that, start reading, or I should say, start writing your paper. Remember to do an outline. And last but not least, if you want to send me a rough draft, I have no problems reading rough drafts for you. Just make sure that you send it to me in enough time that I can read it, give you feedback, and you have the ability to act on that. All right, if you have any questions about your research paper, please don't be afraid to ask. It's 10% of your grade, so I, don't, I want to make sure that that 10% of your grade is the highest grade possible. All right, we'll see you later. Have a good day.